What's up, ladies and gents? I'm Shana Win, your host here, and welcome to my walkthrough again on Authentic for Sniper Elite 5. Wow. So let me just say, this mission, in my opinion, is the toughest Sniper Elite mission that I've ever done. Now, granted, the way that I'm doing it makes it significantly tougher than any other mission could possibly be. Considering that I'm going to get through the entire mission ghosting and only taking out the target, which is the kill target, and specifically one enemy that you have to take out because you cannot get into the room that you need to get into unless you have a key or a satchel. If you get the satchel, that requires you to go loud and causes a, you know, like a, a, a ruckus or whatever you want to call it. Therefore, that is not stealthy. So we sacrificed one non-lethal takedown on an officer just so that we can grab his key so that we can get into the room stealthily. Out of the nat, just the one target and the stealthy uh, non-lethal takedown. This is such a tough mission. You have got to find the perfect routes. What makes it even tougher again is authentic because you don't know where the enemies are. You cannot mark them. And man, so please, if you enjoy this video, make sure you leave a like because it took quite a while to figure everything out and do it. So, with that being said, this is More Mission is 3, still out there Spy somewhere. Academy. But I've uncovered a dossier referring to something called Operation Kraken. The dossier also details a high-level meeting about to take place at Beaumont Saint-Denis. In attendance, forgotten Capitan Seidel, Kriegsmarine German Navy, Obersturm von Führer Richter, Ostland SD Nazi Foreign Intelligence, Obersturmbaumführer Sauer, Mulder's representative. Hauptmann Bruhl, head of security. Local resistance says he's a crack shot. It's quite the guest list. Operation Kraken has to be something big. But that's never stopped me before. High-ranking Nazi officers, highly secure fortress, shouldn't be a problem. Fabian Richter, he's on SOE's kill list and this meeting's guest list. Lucky him. All right, this is such a beautiful map. So, all right, everything is centralized in this castle, but it's the lead up to the castle. So we're gonna do a little zigzag pattern in order to be able to get inside. We're gonna have to go up through kind of a little bit of the street and around in order to make our way into the objective where both targets are gonna be. So everything will be right in the same vicinity. And then we're gonna exit at the top of the map up here. Very difficult to do, especially doing it without taking anyone out. But I assure you, if you do it similar to the way that you see me, it's not going to be exactly perfect. I think you're going to be able to get through it, so let's go ahead and get started. So the biggest thing that I can tell you about this early section is there is a sniper who is centralized right on you, meaning that he goes left and right, and he is looking directly in your direction for about, ooh, say about five seconds, and then he'll move to the other side and he'll keep repeating. Obviously, if you want to make it easier, take him out. You can use your non-lethal rounds if you want to. But we wanted the challenge of obviously not taking him out. So we're going to try to go around him. So everything you see me do is particular. You will get caught if you do not do what I do. If you just think that you can run through this section here to get to the next little part, you're mistaken. That sniper will catch you, and he will alert everyone else, and everybody will just end you immediately. So... A little bit at a time, get to where I'm at right now, and you're going to see a few guards here. We're going to make our way into the right portion of the kind of beached area, and then we're going to do what, what I like to call like a zigzag pattern. So we're going to go up a little bit on the right side, then we're going to switch back to the left side, and then go up a little bit, and then continue on. So it's too difficult to stay on the left side because of enemy placements and the sniper. There's not as much cover. There's not as much grass that you can do. On this side, as you'll see, there is significantly more grass for you to be able to maintain cover from. And that is why in the beginning section, I think it's better. You can also use the zip line to come down to this area as well. So when the guard is looking directly at you, the sniper, you'll see a flash. That's how you know he's looking directly at you. If you don't see the flash, you can start moving up. However, you need to be quick but you can't run. The moment you run, he's automatically going to start getting on you. So just get from one area to the other as quickly as possible 
Otherwise, he is going to see you. Also, take note that there are vehicles driving through these areas. So, there are motorcycles with the, like, the, the cab car attached to them. Uh, so, you have to be careful when you're going. You, you have no way of knowing where they are. So, listen to the sounds, and then hopefully you'll be able to uh, figure it out. So, what we need to do is move just a little bit up ahead. But I'm constantly looking behind me because I just don't know when the, um, you know, when the little motorbike is going to come up. So, there. See right there. So, you just, you don't really know because there's so much sound going on at the same time. So, therefore, it can be really difficult to know when you can move up. So, essentially, what's going to happen here is there's going to be a guard coming from the other side. And he's going to be coming this way. So, you have to wait for that to happen. This guy does take quite a bit of time uh, to kind of do his route as he's coming over here. And then he's going to go all the way back around. So get up here against this cover when you have the chance. This guy is coming over here. Now, the reason he's coming over here is because the sniper will make you out. As I said before, you cannot get through this section without the sniper seeing you in a slight manner. Not, not a full-on, okay... I know it's the player character, let's start shooting, but more in the, you know, like when your white meter starts to go up kind of fashion. And then it will get to yellow just very slightly because there's just not enough cover in between. Even if you crouch, it doesn't work. So bear in mind that he's gonna come over here, it's just gonna be just like this. When that guy turns around for a split second, then we can move over here to the right, or excuse us, left. And we're gonna wait here. So you notice those doves, right? Those doves. Not those ones in particular. One of the coolest features, and I don't remember this being in the previous Sniper Elite games, but maybe you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. But it's so funny. The developers have put these doves in strategic places that you know you have to cross in order to get to the next section. That's going to play a big part, especially in the end. There's going to be a section at the very, very end, and we'll get to it when we get there, that the first time you're playing it, you're not even going to think, and then you're going to get caught immediately because you just, you're not even going to think about it. And I'll get to it. I don't want to spoil it too much, but it's, it's kind of hilarious. So here, as they're both moving up, just stay behind. Just try to stay in as much cover as possible. Remember, the guy is, his sights are on you. There's not a single time where the white meter is not going up, okay? It's just, is it going up enough for him to tell one of his guys to go and check you out. So luckily there's boxes there that'll keep it from going into the red, but you gotta be very, very careful. So even when you move in this grass, the sniper can still see you move in the grass. So you definitely wanna be as still as possible until this guy here is gonna be looking in the other direction. Once he starts going the other direction, then we can start making our zigzag pattern over to the other side. So once that happens, and then we can move on up to the next section. I don't recommend staying on the right side here uh, because of that sniper, as the closer you get to him, the easier it is for him to see you, therefore to screw you up. But here you've got to run. If you don't run, he's automatically going to see you, and then that's it. Uh, so keep going, and then we're going to make our way, as I said, straight all the way up here. And luckily enough, we're far enough ahead to where we don't have to worry about any enemies until we get up here. This guy does a triple pattern. Left, middle, right, middle, left, middle, right, middle. And he just does that over and over again. There's also the vehicles that are coming through here that you have to watch out for. So if you run up when he is doing his process of going to the middle section, you could get up here, one, before he turns to the middle and sees you, and two, before the motorbike sees you as well. Once that's done, Operation then you're going to get up here. Kraken, whatever it is. Wait until this yeah, guy, you can barely see him all the way on the other the side. Answers. There's a guy on the left, he just passed. Could be taking place anywhere. Once he turns around, needs. then you can go up. And then make your way to the left. Now, once you're going along this way, you're going to be pretty safe. No one's going to really catch you out. There's going to be one guard that's going to be up here inside this room. I don't know where he's going to be on your playthrough, so you just kind of have to take it little by little. Mine, he was just right there. Therefore, we can kind of sneak up on him and move to the right. There are two places he goes in this room. One is going to be at the table in front. The other one is going to be up these stairs exactly where I'm going, looking out the door that I'm heading. Those are the two locations that he'll go back to. 
Right now, he's going to that left side where the table is, so we can clearly make our way up. Now, I am sure there are other methods for getting into this area. However, you really are funneled into a specific way to get up there. You can take the left, the middle, or the right to get to the funnel. But once you get to the funnel, which is this little road up ahead, you're... I mean, there's not really a, another way that you're going to be able to do it. So this guy will turn to the right. So if you can angle yourself right, you can do a little dis disbelievability. <laughs> I made up that word, by the way. And uh, get by him without him seeing. Head to the right. See the doves there? They will automatically... Yes, as soon as you get close, they automatically do that, which alerts the guy. Nothing you can do about it. Again, that's what I was trying to tell you. That's just like one of those instances where the developers really, really put some roadblocks in front of you. But you can use it to your advantage because now you can actually go ahead and move forward. Uh, once this guy starts doing his other pattern, there's a sniper there. He'll go in three different areas. You don't really know which one he's going to do. But once this guy moves, then you can go ahead and make your way. There's a guy on the top level there, moving to the left, and then you're clear on this bottom level for a little while. That's the whole point of going. I found this route to be the best way for myself. I tried other routes, and they all forced you to have to take out at least one or two enemies, and I didn't want to have to do that. This was the only one that I found that did not force me to take anyone out. There's a little kind of, uh, I don't, I'm not, it's, I wouldn't say it's a cheat area, but it's a special, unique, stealthy area here that allows you to go all the way up past this section. So, if you wouldn't have found this right here, you would have had to follow the road all the way around. And there are so many guards along the road, but because we went the route that we did, we're able to bypass all of that and head over here. Now, once you get over here and you go up, now, again, I don't know if it's going to be exactly how it is for you because, you know, timings might be different. There are two routes. You can either go straight or you can go to the left. I recommend going to the left. Everything should hopefully line up for you. Once you see this guy here, he's going to turn in your direction and then he's going to go in the left direction. Once he goes to the left, you can start heading down. Remember, there are still vehicles going up and down the roads. There's a guy... On the opposite side of him, doing checkpoints as well. He's immediately going to turn around, though, so you need to be quick about this. So as soon as you see him, he's going to turn around, and then you can go. Follow him, and do this immediately, because the guy behind you is going to turn around, and he's going to see you, and you won't have enough time if you do it any other way. There you go. See how he's already back in this direction? So good. You're doing great. Keep it up. Again, this is the funnel that I was talking about. There is a right side that you could go down, but you can, again, follow that right where the red car was and keep going around that right side. However, if you do that, it's going to take you twice as long because you have so many more enemies to go through. And then you'll have to go through almost another little tiny town before you can make your way up into this area. This is, in my opinion, the best way to get up. So we're going to do another save here. Always save. Like, don't be afraid of saving. I mean, yes, the challenge is not saving, but when you're playing this, I mean, this is super challenging, guys, and the frustration can get real because you have no idea where the enemies are, when they're coming, which direction they're looking because you have no HUD. So you're going to wait here a little bit. This guy is going to come back, and then he's going to go back to the other direction again. You have to wait until he goes back into the other direction again. Notice how there are two different vehicles that are patrolling these streets. So you just have a small window of time to make all of this work. So once he turns around, you're going to start going. You're going to see another guy on the opposite side of where I am right now. I'm inside this bush. There he is. You don't have to worry about him at this point. As soon as this guy goes, go. But do not run, because if you run, then they're going to hear you. So this part's a little tricky. We're going to have to use a bottle to distract one of the guards. So stick to the right side. This guy's going to be coming in this direction. He's going to turn and he's going to sit at that edge there for about a good minute. Go over here. There's another guy on this left side you can't see up those stairs. So get over here. We're going to switch to our bottle. 
And we're going to wait just a few seconds, and we're going to throw the bottle in this left corner up here. Otherwise, you're going to get caught. You can't sit here without getting caught. Once he's taken the bait, then you can go up. Otherwise, he would can, uh, continue to go down and see you, and the other guy would see you coming back the other direction. So really, you it's a bottle or nothing. That's what you have to do in that section there. Bottle or take out one of the enemies. All right, so we finally made it into the heart of the fortress. We're going to make our way around to the left, and we're going to head all the way up the stairs. In order to get to the target and the objective, you need to go all the way to the top. So keep finding routes. You don't have to do mine, but keep finding routes that are going to take you higher and higher. And once you get to the, the limit of how high you can go, that is where your objective is going to be. It's going to take you a little while to get there. Uh, there's going to be enemies in some weird places, but I have all of the routes pretty much memorized, knowing exactly what to do and when I need to do it. And of course, I always love using the trick of standing on someone's right side because you know they're going to turn to the left. Um, but I will say that there are instances where they don't always turn to the left. But if you've played these levels enough, then you really start to get an understanding of, of what you can do to get around these enemies. It can be very, very tough nonetheless, but still really fun. And don't forget, if you do like what you guys see, please support the channel. It really helps. Um, become a member, you know, uh, become a patron, donate, super chat, all that stuff. You can click that little thanks button on this video right now and support my family and I so we can continue to, uh, to be able to do this. This is my full-time job. We're retired from the Army, however, I don't get a paycheck from the Army. I have disability going through, but it's not been approved yet. We'll see what that happens, but uh, other than that, this is what we do. So if you want to help support, that's how you can do it. So, he's going to turn to the left, or at least he does in mine. I know, it's ridiculous and it's kind of weird that you can do that, but it, it works for the purposes of these videos. We're going to make our way to the right. Now, there will be sometimes a guy coming through that other side, so you want to check the other side just to make sure that he's not there. These, these guards have very long patterns of what they do. So now we're going to head more and more to the top and we're getting to the uh, upper level where the actual target and the objective is going to be. You can essentially go ahead and run all the way up till you get to the semi-top. Don't go too far because there's going to be a guard looking in your direction. And up here ahead is going to be the one guy you're going to need to take out. You're going to leave him unconscious, of course. Watch out for this guy. As soon as you uh, get in here, you'll get your achievement unlocked or whatever. Or not achievement, but your objective. You need to throw. The reason we're throwing is because if you don't, he's just going to take a very, very long time to come back. So just throw that there. That way you have an opportunity to go up. Now, this room is where the objective is. Again, you could either find the missing key or use a satchel. If you do a satchel, you don't have to take anyone out, but you're going to go loud and proud, and then you're going to get into a lot of fights, so what's the point? This is the only guy you need to knock out. He has the key to the room. Once you pick him up, you don't need to search him. You'll automatically pick up the room key. Hide him in this thing over here. If you go upstairs, you can also take out the guy with the sniper bullet from up there, but there's two other officers in the room, so there's no way to stealth that if you do that method. Here is the only way that I have found to stealth it. So there's three officers in this room. One of them is, one of, is your kill target. He's the one that's in the back. So we're going to throw a bottle. At the end here, you need to make sure you throw it far enough away to where they don't aggro. Sometimes if you throw it too close to the enemy, all three of them will start to aggro, and then you've ruined your opportunity. However, if you do it like this, they don't aggro, and they start individually going off by themselves one at a time. So you just need to be patient here. This guy is searching in the area. That's the guy you need to take out. This other guy will eventually give up his search and start moving out of the room as well. 
once he's gone, then that just leaves the target, and then you can stealthily get up behind him and actually take him out. It's I, I always say to myself, I find it so funny that I'm playing a Sniper Elite game, and the last two missions, I haven't had to use my Sniper at all. That's not saying anything bad about the game. That's just saying that I always strive to do things that I think these games were never meant to do. <laughs> All right, there's our target taken out. I'm gonna take his body because there are guards that come through that door and that door, or they go past it. They don't come in this room again, but they go past. So we're gonna leave him behind the statue, and then we're gonna pick up our piece of intel, and then it is time to exfiltrate. Think I've grabbed all I can. This mission so far has taken the longest. But, essentially you can complete it in about 30 minutes. Maybe around 27 minutes if you follow the route that I do. But learning it took me about 5 hours. A lot of work goes into this. I'm actually playing the Xbox version when I'm doing my learning of the level. And I'm playing the PC version when I'm recording. So, essentially I'm playing two different versions. One is for kind of learning, and the other one, which the PC, is for the higher quality, uh, you know, walkthrough on Authentic. So essentially I'm doing a Sniper Elite mode on the Xbox and Authentic on the PC. All right, so at this point, we're just making our way to the exfiltration. I showed you it was behind. There is one guard that comes in and out of this area. So once you get in here, you're going to head up and you're going to grab the cell key, or should I say the cellar key. So at the very, very bottom of the cellar, there are some satchel charges. In this room here to the right, there's a safe. You can find the key. I don't know where the key is. I didn't spend time looking for the key. There's the, uh, safe. Maybe you just need to knock out this guard and see if he has the key. I don't do it because I didn't want to add to the, uh, the enemies I'm taking out. I want to try to keep it as low as possible because that's the challenge. But I'm going to show you where you can get the satchel charges. So if you want to go back up, then boom, you can... Go back up to the safe, use your satchel charges, take them out, or maybe knock out that guy. Maybe he has the key, and you'll be able to get whatever is in the safe. I could easily have done it, but I didn't want to because that's not the purpose of this. I'm here just to show you how to uh, complete these levels. The hardest difficulty with uh, trying to ghost as much as possible. So in this game, there's not multiple areas for you to exfiltrate. There's always one specific area. So you have to follow whatever route that you need to get there. Down here is where the uh, satchel charges are going to be. And you pick that up, and then you can go get the safe if that's what you want. And here there's going to be one sniper. This is the one sniper that actually patrols the entire lookout of the exfiltration point. However, you can get around him pretty easy just by kind of screwing with his AI a little bit. So get up here, and you want him to slightly see you. I don't know why this happens, and I found this just off of a fluke um, the first time I went through here. I didn't know there was going to be a guard there, because when you're playing on Sniper Elite mode, it shows your HUD. And it shows you where enemies are, but it doesn't tell you which direction. It just has, like, kind of a foggy area. However, when this guy slightly sees you, he decides to turn around and go back the opposite direction before he comes back and looks for you. It's so weird. I don't know if it's a glitch or some sort, but it was the way that I found to get around this guy. Otherwise, it would be a little more difficult to get around him because of his patterns. Unless you just took him out. You see that little red shiny thing there on the right side next to the door? It's on the left of the door. Uh, that's like a gargoyle that you could shoot, I guess, to have it like land on someone. I'm not sure how that works. I haven't tried it, but let me know if any of you have tried those. I love the detail in these maps. They've done a, 
Rebellion, I am so pleased with you. You've done a great job at uh, making this. At this point, you're free. The sniper guy is actually going in the other direction, which is why he will not see you, and you're good to go. At this point, you're pretty much good to go until you get to the very, very end where the exfil is. However, there's a guard that gets in your way big time. Sorry if you guys hear my dog in the background barking. Uh, we've got um, family over, so... Uh, he wants to go downstairs and see them, but we can't let him because Grandma, you know, uh, her legs aren't very strong and Nintendo likes to kind of jump on you, so. Alright, so once you come up here, don't worry about this guy at the top. You're free to go. And we're going to make our way to the right. There are two different routes. I'm just showing you the right side route. So, there's two guards left to deal with. There's this guy here. You don't really have to worry about him. He's going to turn back around, so go ahead and get back on the other side here. Now, oh boy. What can I say about this guy? This next guy that we're going to deal with. The developers were so smart. They knew there were going to be people like me that, were going to tr that wanted to get around him without taking him out. They knew it. They, 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 they probably sat down and said, listen, there's going to be that one player that wants to do this without taking him out. How can we screw with his mind? Well, I'm going to tell you. Remember I told you about those doves, right? Well, the developers decided to put doves right on the dock, okay? No matter where the guard is that's down here, he will hear those doves. There's nothing you can do. I tried to throw a bottle to see if I can get his in his character to kind of move up a little bit more to not hear him, but it doesn't work. So there's nothing you can really do in order for those doves not to distract this guard. However, if you time it right, and he's at the very, very top of his path, he will not be able to see you as long as you get to the exfiltration point quick enough. However, if he's anywhere else, like here, just on the, the bridge, it doesn't matter. He is going to see you once you try to go past these doves. There's no way to slowly maneuver through the doves. The moment you get up on them, even if you're tr being stealthy, they automatically go off. And that obviously creates a problem. The first time I did this, I was like, yeah, I got through here. We're going to be able to sneak through as I go down. Awesome. And then, without even noticing, I just glimpsed the doves right as I went down there, and he immediately turned around, and it ruined the stealth. So, I'm going to try to throw a bottle here, but it doesn't work. Like, he doesn't even hear it. I don't know if that's a programming issue or something, and he doesn't even recognize it. So just wait till he gets to the very, very top, and he stops. Okay, now we're going to go. The doves are going to get up. As you can see, he's looking in this direction right now. He starts to see us very slightly. Make sure you crawl. Get to the objective point. You can do it from sitting or from uh, laying down. And get in there before he has a chance to go aggro. Congratulations! You just stealthed this amazing, amazing mission, which we haven't even scratched the surface of the areas that you can actually go to. Verben executed successful infiltration and exfil of Beaumont Saint Denis. Der Schatten war in Beaumont Saint Denis und wir haben ihn verloren? Wahrscheinlich. Wir müssen vom Schlimmsten ausgehen, dass er von der Fabrik in Matresac weiß. Verdoppeln Sie die Sicherheit. Die Fertigung muss laufen. Operation Krake wird nicht durch einen einzigen Mann gefährdet werden. Alright, so as I said earlier, I'm going to be taking my time through these missions. I'm not putting them out there fast because I really, really want to do this perfect. And I want to show you guys the authentic way. So again, we're not doing the optional objectives. Mission complete and the kill list. Those are the two ones that we're completing. This is the best stealth 
I was able to get. I'd love to know if you were able to get on the very, very bottom. We had a detection score of five. So if you got below that detection score, doing it the way that I did, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, leave that like, support the channel, become a member, click the join button, do a thanks. All that stuff goes to helping the channel out. We'll see you next time. Peace out. Bitches.